the Hail Varsity Radio Saturday Morning Show, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Strap yourselves in. Here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt. Y'all don't even know he was a virgin until he's 28, and now, roll tide. And Mark Cranach. Time has come for someone to put his foot down. And that foot is me. Welcome to it. Weekend edition is here. It's Hale Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. The road show continues at the graduate Minneapolis. Uh, as we have said, a bad punt away from Gopher Stadium. And uh, we are ready to get you going for Nebraska-Minnesota. Kickoff at 11 ESPN2. Uh, we are in Minneapolis. Chris Schmidt, the pride of Fairbury, Bill Dolman, Mark Cranach. Back from assignment, he is in his living room. There's a gorgeous ficus behind him. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not a ficus. It's a, right here. Yeah. It's a bamboo plant. It's for long. Oh, bamboo. Is it real bamboo yeah. or is it fake bamboo? It's real bamboo. It's real. It's real. Well, I kept that thing alive. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say the luck has been amazing, uh, but you know, it's here. Uh, Elijah Herbal back at our ESP at Lincoln Studios. He was trank darted and tied up and just stayed overnight. We're stream yarding, uh, which means you can find us ESP at Lincoln Facebook. Uh, Cranach, is that a is that a fresh pour? Is that the the special coffee? You're Mr. Coffee Guy. I had to go with the the diesel down the hall here at the hotel at the Graduate. Yeah, this is a Guatemalan single origin, um, characterized by notes of citrus and honey and <laughs> love. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, it pretty sounds good, but like I'm not a it. coffee snob. No, you're you're just picky. Um, uh, our yeah. friends at uh, Aero Brokerage, Ferris Financial Group, they are uh, helping power this roadshow. Guys, how are we feeling? Do we have a good Friday night? I mean. Dolman and I are uh, our roommate in it, and we're watching college football, and it's you know it's uh, lights out at ten thirty because we're so uh, ready to rip the t- <laughs> ready to rip the town out. Watched Oregon last night. Hang on, watched Clemson uh, do their thing in in uh, the Carrier Dome, and then we kind of fast forward to uh, what it's all about today for Nebraska. We talk about progress. We talk about uh, kind of a, a better feeling, even though. Last week was was heartbreak, man. You were proud of the kids, uh, proud of the team, and, and now, Cranach, Bill, it's kind of in Elijah's kind of go do your job today. We've got this Gopher fan that's kind of wandered by our table, uh, and here's what happened. So he comes over to our table here and says to Schmidt or ask Schmidt. Uh, so what's going to happen today? And he goes, uh, you guys are going to lose by double digits and took his clip-on tie right off his neck and slammed it to the ground, and the, and the guy buzz kills and walks away. What's no. his name, P.J. Fleck? No. Well, that's the other thing. We got, we, got a, we got a cowboy named Judge out of Houston that's been by us, and uh, he's, he's a big Fleck guy. He's got, like, all, pa- he's got all passes yeah. going. Yeah. Kelly and, Stopper's walking by. Yeah. 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 Hey, how are you, Kelly? Good Good to see you. All right, Kelly Stoffer's waving at you, Mark Cranach. He's a Nebraska native, correct? He's uh, the pride of Rushville. Is he coming on? Yeah, we've got to get him another headset. Okay. Can you handle this, and I'll dig up a headset, Cranach? You you want to talk to Kelly Stoffer and work on arm angles? Absolutely. (laughs) So maybe I should just... uh, I mean, is, is he on now? Because I can't see. No, not you know. yet. He's going to get on coffee <laughs> like everybody else in Minnesota. <laughs> so let's talk about um, the Nebraska-Minnesota game. I feel like Nebraska has it. finally established, firmly established, trust with the fan base, with the majority of the fan base. Okay, I'm not saying that they've won everybody over and everybody's all like 100% on the Scott Frost train, but – most people that I've talked to that have watched the last few weeks are on board to a level, have less angst, <laughs> have less disgust, less questions. People are generally feeling pretty good. But the, it, but it's a fickle because you lose today and that's gone. It's, <laughs> it's just see you later. All of that goodwill that you you have built up goodwill – to a point that I don't even think we've seen since what 2018. Is that fair? Maybe, even though the maybe, team is like 
maybe since you know. Scott walked in the door, actually, you know, and everything yeah. was all fired up for the Akron game, uh, and things have gone kind of south since that th- thunderstorm, right? Uh, but I, I agree with you. I think that there's just something about people recognizing the effort, recognizing yep. the way that they have played. And did they win them both? No. But they certainly uh, put on a great show last weekend. And now you got to do it on the road. But I, for for the most part, I, when you go back to the, 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 the first home games of the year, are they going to be sold out? They got to have the big red experience and all that. And there's just this right. total angst about the fan base. I think I'm, I'm not sure you've gone 180 degrees, but you're at least at 150, you know, with people going, I, I think I see what, I, what I've been wanting to see. And now we need to see it on yeah. the road. Mm-hmm. It's, I, it, it's, it's amazing, too, when you consider the record. And it's something that Chris has talked about regularly, I think, for a couple of years now. It's like, well, how do, it, it's, it's how you look in defeat. Is there honor in defeat? And to be honest, to some degree, I was just like, yeah, I don't know if people will be okay with that. You know, I was just kind of like, yeah, maybe, the, the, maybe the whole moral victory slash honor. Moral victory is the wrong word, but the whole honor and defeat thing. I was like, I don't know how much weight that's going to carry. I, I've been proven wrong this year, just with the way you know, right? Because I think the things. He, so Oklahoma, I think, was a pleasant surprise. Michigan State was a gut gut punch because of just how ha- it was so flukish. It was flukish, and I think people recognized that was a fluke. That wasn't sort of an indictment on the program as a whole. That was like, how did that ball go to that guy? How was there no coverage there? How was that the easiest punt return I've ever seen in college football? Like, what? It was a fluke. Michigan, I think you saw a pretty good Michigan team. You saw a dude hurtling a guy 30 yards downfield at full speed. They're good. They just looked pretty damn good. So I think people can understand that one. The environment was perfect for that. You, so you combine all that, and it's just like you have this momentum. Kind of for the first – it's weird. You, losses, but momentum. You can piss that all away today, <laughs> or you can capitalize on it. Yeah, I mean, you nailed really, it. It's that simple. You are right on. And it's not just, oh, oh whoops, um, I'm wearing white and I shouldn't have. <laughs> you're you're yeah. knee deep because you got a bye week to compound this misery. Oh, come on now. Well, you know, I'm Mich- just saying. You know, Min- no, I know, and you know, Minnesota's going to have something for Nebraska coming off of their bye week. Like they absolutely look like, and it's, and you can't prepare for trick. Lots plays. of That's Advil the with their injury yeah. report. Well, we got to be ready for the trick plays. Well, you can't be ready. That's the whole point of trick. Play. You can't be ready for them, <laughs> right? It's just like you know what I mean. Like, so yeah, there. Nebraska is going to have to be ready for everything. And then couple that with what Eric Chenander is going through. My goodness. And how that's affecting the team and how that's affecting him. Um, There's a lot happening today. A lot happening today. And you just wonder if the team is at a point where they're feeling pressure or if they're at a point where they can play freely. Well, and, and you, I, you look at it, this is totally a game over the past three years that Nebraska would drop in previous years. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you look at the fact that Michigan, or sorry, Minnesota is so depleted by injuries. Uh, and I think back yep. to that Minnesota game last year where they had 30 guys that weren't even here because of COVID. Nebraska still found a way to go lose that game. This is the type of game that Nebraska just didn't get done. It, it was This was the trap game for Scott Frost the past three years. If any game on this year's schedule was a trap game, it would have been this one, aside from Illinois, but we'll leave that one in the, in the past. Uh, this is the one. Yep. So this is this is the, the the sign of progress for Nebraska. We've seen them get close against some good teams. Now go and show it that you can go win a football game against a good team that's down on their luck right now. It's important to 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 get this done. Uh, Bill Bryant says, "What's up? Fire up Dolman. Have a great mm-hmm. day, gentlemen." Uh, Bill, thanks for checking us out on Facebook, StreamYard, ESPN Lincoln, ESPN uh, Lincoln dot com and uh, the Facebook stream. Now, and, and I think this does kind of mark progress, even though Minnesota's not a ranked team, even though Minnesota's barely over 500, even though Minnesota's a team that just, you know, lost to a, a, a team that's not great in the MAC. You know, I mean, there, there's a lot of detractors we can throw in about this gopher team, a team that's injured, a team that has uh, a, a fraction of the talent that's available to them from the beginning of the season. This isn't the same Minnesota squad that was trading punches with Ohio State. 
so no. uh, any any glory of, of hey beating Minnesota on the road as a Nebraska fan, you're gonna put that under your arm and and run with it, man. It's it it's gonna be a, a nice win, a big win, but. I think it's it's uh, similar to the Northwestern setup where you're kind of surprised by it and you're like, wow, this feels pretty good to go unload on somebody, but you're not going to get carried away with it uh, as to uh, anointing yourself. It's, it's a long journey, but it's better than where it's been. And, and to your point, Elijah, to your take, Cranach, you too, Billy D. This is a game you absolutely would would screw up. And if ha- had you have won somehow last week, I'd have put yeah. everything my kid owned in <laughs> Minnesota <laughs> yeah. to, to win or cover the number. Okay, yeah. that's that's just that's just where it is. But I think from a confidence standpoint, I don't think Nebraska's puckering. I, I just don't. I think they're ready to go continue to, to keep grinding. I think they're pretty mature. Well, and, and let's let's put it this way. If Nebraska on the field brings it the way Nebraska fans have brought it to the Twitter sphere over the last <laughs> 36 hours, I mean, this is going to be a Northwestern type uh, performance because let's face it, P.J. Fleck has been righted and lefted uh, endlessly and mercilessly by Husker fans. He on looks the Twitter, like the, uh, Twitter, the, Twitter the guy sphere, in... uh, The last 24 hours has been really, really impressive. And I don't think Nebraska fans had that, that in them after the Illinois game, but they've been resurgent after with New Mexico, with uh, Northwestern and Michigan. So Part of it's the target. The performance is, <laughs> the, but you've got to perform when the game's on, and Nebraska fans have responded to, to P.J. Fleck and Twitter. I, You know, I, I have not... <laughs> I have not seen Hot Tub Time Machine all the way through, but Lou is the character. Okay, <laughs> Lou's the guy. Uh, maybe we can find a picture of Lou, Elijah, and, and put a picture of, of Lou and Fleck up here on the uh, the, uh, the the live stream. But, but Lou's, Lou's the character that, that Nebraska fans are circling and saying, that's you, P.J. Fleck. Uh, now, the gal from, uh, from Mad Men was in it. Uh, Don Draper's 37th wife uh, was, was the, uh, the highlight of Hot Tub. Was that Hot Tub Time Machine 1 or 2? I don't remember. But she was in the hot tub, and it was cool. Uh, anywho. I could have spent the last 24 hours just reading some of these things. Well, the the Ord School, there he is. See, that, that, that's Lou from Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> <laughs> that's Lou from Hot Tub. Cranach, doesn't it look like him? Um, hold on. Let me get back on the right tab. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> it really does. It looks exactly like him. My goodness. I was at a wedding last night where there was Mike Lindell, Trump Jr., and Sean you're Callahan. At, you were, they were all there. You, you were at that wedding? None of them were there. Okay. None of them were uh, actually there. Uh, they're body they, doubles. A lot of doppelgangers. So this guy fits right in the one that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother. What table were you stuck at? Or do you even want to go there? No, it was good. The table was great. It was at the Durham. Like, nice place. Nice place. You know what I'm saying? It. D- d- is if you were stuck with Don <laughs> Jr., I would have jumped in front of a bus. Oh yeah, no, I wasn't stuck with him. Yeah, okay. he would have been passing around a mirror, and yeah, it would have been. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's just, just in a, just a. I, I don't know. That might not be true, but I think it's true. Like Don, you got a little frost on your uh, mustache, there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Jamie checks in GBR and thank you for the great show. You can uh, join us on StreamYard. Uh, Hail Varsity Weekend Edition. We're here at the Graduate. Chris Schmidt, Bill Dolman, Cranach is hunkered down in Big Red Country along with Elijah Herbal. Guys, let's ask this question. Uh, we're, we're, we're running before we're crawling. But I'm interested here. Is Nebraska making the playoff this year? No. I don't think so. No. no. Oh. <laughs> no. I, I'm wondering about. So, think, look. 20 I'm wondering about the West. I'm wondering about the West race. Okay, I'm wondering about the West race. How close is Nebraska to being a top 20 football team right now? If they, if they cover that punt against Michigan State and they go beat Michigan, they're a top 20 team right now. And look, listen, Alabama loses a handful of more times. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they drop the next three. Like, we're already ruling out Nebraska here. We should not do that. You never know That's what's going to happen. That's pretty good. That's Clemson's, pretty good. Clemson's lucky to score two points a game right now. 
See, so no, they're not every, everyone's ready to crucify Nebraska, and, and that happened after Illinois. I understand that. Clemson's rolling out three freshman offensive linemen or redshirt freshman offensive linemen. They're garbage compared to what Clemson's been. Okay. Yeah. They same quarterback. Score. Same quarterback who put up forty-five a game in in relief of of of, of COVID. Trevor Lawrence. Okay. Yeah. And and now he has, I don't know, four guys that that are off to the NFL, and and now Clemson's a nightmare. I mean, you've had hashtag fire Saban, hashtag fire Dabo, going this entire week because fan bases have turned into the uh, you know, the O three Husker fan base led by Steve Peterson. <laughs> I mean, it's it's gotten crazy. Oh, uh, uh, I. I don't know if I'd trade places necessarily with some of those fans. Actually, I'd trade places with all of them. Are you kidding me? Like, that's amazing. That, that's where here, – you're not even hearing fire Scott Frost now and the team's three and four. You're just not hearing it. No. Like, think about think about the world we live in. Yep. Like, where I, we're at. Yep. Chris, the, the whole honor and defeat thing. You called it from, from day one. And how about the vote of confidence? I, I think it's even more than that, that Trev has given Scott – this week in the ESPN interview um, where he talked about, you know, he's you know, Scott is my coach, but just said he's not worried about the last three and a half years. He's worried about what's happening now, and he likes what he's seeing now. Kelly um, Stoffer's joining us here. I'll let you scoot over here a little bit, yeah. Kelly. And uh, Dolman, you come on in here too. All right, Wave. You want to get rid of the icon, Elijah, for me, bud? There, there we go. go. Look at that. So, Hollywood yeah, and on. Kelly Stauffer, pride of Rushville. Bill Dolman, pride of Fairbury. Basically suburb <laughs> sister cities. Mark exactly. Crane, Mark Cranack uh, with the ficus in the background. <laughs> it's not a ficus. It's, it's not. It's a lucky bamboo. And, and you <laughs> think it's the whole sense of scale thing is screwing them up? Because look at is that. It, is it legal? <laughs> I'm Colorado, where I live, it is. <laughs> Which state are we talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which state? <laughs> And Elijah in our studio. And uh, Kelly was awesome to, to spend time with us yesterday. Getting geared up, man. Should be a crazy ball game today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't had Nebraska for quite some time. And there's BYU? What's that? Was it the BYU game? You know, I can't even remember when I had him last. I think it was in Lincoln. Yeah. Um, I think it was a week after BYU, though, because oh. I remember <laughs> going through all that end-of-game minutia that was a little exhausting. But, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. You know, football is different in Nebraska. We all know that, mm-hmm. and I miss that a lot. Yeah, we're noticing in kind of in the, in the hallways of the hotels the last 24 hours of being here twice that there's as much red in this hotel, which is just a few blocks or a few uh, bad punts away from the uh, from the say. stadium. <laughs> from, the, from, from the stadium. stadium. <laughs> you know, I, I think the atmosphere is going to be very much – to the liking of Scott Frost and the Huskers. I don't think this is going to be a, a home field advantage for Minnesota. I really don't think it is. And I think that's one of the keys, actually, because Nebraska hasn't exactly lit it up on the road. Their communication, especially offensively, has not been stellar on the road. Um, and so I think you're right. It, you know, those days where you would go to an away game or I would cover an away game, and it was as much red as anything else, you know, those days, Days need to re- return for Nebraska fans, no doubt. Don't you think, though, that after the last couple of weeks, given uh, I know you you followed what happened at Illinois, okay, Fordham and Buffalo. Let's see if we can get, can get some people in Memorial Stadium. But the last couple of weeks, you can include Oklahoma in that. The last the second half of that that was a winnable game. But the last two weeks have done a lot to have a resurgence with Nebraska fans' belief in Scott and the program. I think so. I, I think the last, um, well, you take their last three losses. I mean, those teams are 18-0, and 0, for crying out loud, yeah. mm-hmm. and decent teams. So, yeah, I think you always kind of weigh and measure the progress. You know, is it real? Is it, you know, temporary? Is that where we live now? That kind of thing. That's what I watch when I'm watching games is, you know, is this repeatable and is it getting consistent? And I think it is. And it's interesting. We talked to Scott a couple of days ago, and he said, you know, it's been that one play away thing. We have to make that one play. But he said we're there. And the reason that he believes more than ever is because the players now believe that they're there. And that matters greatly because that's the difference between winning and losing in those moments. We've all been on teams where if the tradition hasn't, recent tradition hasn't been good, 
in that clutch moment, you look around wondering what the heck is going to go wrong <laughs> and who's going to screw it up. And they don't seem to be doing that anymore. Um, and so now the next step is you need that moment where we've done it. We, we won that game that we should. But this game really isn't like that. This game is a game where you come in here and win this by a couple of touchdowns if you truly are living in that neighborhood now where people are saying they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's also kind of baby steps, isn't it? Because, I mean, I, the, the actual winning part has been the hardest part for this team so far. You look at ESPN's power rankings. Mm-hmm. Nebraska is a huge outlier. They're in the top 25 with a three and four record, right? So, like, actually winning the games has been the problem for Nebraska. From what you've seen in your research leading into this game, do they feel like an outlier to you? Do they look like a quality team that just has had just a bad run of luck? Or how would you kind of characterize them from what you've seen? Because because you're covering different teams around America all the time. And now here's Nebraska. Like, since you've dove down this rabbit hole, <laughs> what are you yeah. seeing? A rabbit hole indeed. Um, <laughs> you know, I football's not that complicated. The people that play it, are complicated, but the game itself <laughs> is not that complicated. You know, there are certain things that you have to do well to be consistently in it to to win. And you know, what is that saying? You, you are what your record says you are. So you're three and four. You can't hide from that. But there's there not every three and four is treated the same. And I do believe so. So I hadn't seen Nebraska for a while. I get a lot of Nebraska questions from family members and so forth. The text started in the Illinois game, by the way, and I can't repeat most of it even on radio. <laughs> There's and, been a lot of velvet hammers taken to phones. <laughs> exactly. You know? And I'm, I'm like, well, I don't really watch them it's to know exactly fault, <laughs> what's going on behind the curtain. But now I feel like I've, I've been able to do that for the last few days, and, and I really like what they're doing. You know, I I start with Illinois, which was obviously not pretty, but there are a lot of kind of extenuating circumstances in that game. You know, it's starting with a a conference game. It was going to be in Ireland, and it's not, and then it's an away game and all those things. And I'm I'm watching Adrian Martinez and said, oh, my goodness, this looks like a – you know, a revisiting of the worst of times with him. He just didn't seem comfortable. And then I continue to watch tape, coaches tape, and I'm like – this is going somewhere. And then you get to the second half of Michigan, and that was really good stuff. I think Adrian was brilliant in the – I mean, a lot of times in that game, but in the second half in particular. So I think it's real stuff because they're doing the things that you have to do to be not only competitive but ultimately win those games. And so you want to stay the course. That's what people do sometimes. They, they don't get the results, and then – they're calling for change or they, you know, the, the coaches reinvent themselves, reinvent schemes, mm-hmm. and you miss actually the time you were going to hit it hard because you're jumping around. And, and I don't think Scott and his staff is going to do that based on what Scott is saying. They, they believe in what they're doing. More importantly, the players believe in it now. Kelly Stoffers with us, uh, part of ESPN. Of course, you'll watch him a little bit later today on ESPN2, Nebraska at Minnesota. We're here at the Graduate Roadshow Saturday weekend edition. Mark Cranach with uh, the plant behind him as you're watching the screen. <laughs> Does that plant have a name, by the way? We should name that plant. I'm good with that if you guys want to come up with one. Like, seriously, I have not named it. It's the plant well, to be named later. Okay, okay. Is it actually living or is that a plastic thing? No, it's totally alive. Wow. Um, yeah, it's doing great. <laughs> it's bringing me a lot of luck. You know? It's a good it's conversation piece, too, obviously. <laughs> three, three and four. Yeah, great luck. Great luck. No. Yeah, uh, Kelly, point. we'll let you get rolling here, but, right. but real quick in just two seconds, and thanks again for, for saying hi and making time. Um, I gonna... can't get enough of Bill, by the way. <laughs> well, that's we haven't really seen each other for 10 years. I, I can move. <laughs> you know, that's okay. <laughs> it's been a while, but. I just wanted to, to get your reaction take just as a, from, a, from a player perspective just with, uh, with Nebraska. And is there any way to anticipate a response from the team for Coach Chenander? Yeah. First of all, our condolences, you yeah. know, and, and far as – 
the Stauffer household. We got that news, and we've been praying for Eric and his family um, since that time. And I had, it's one of those moments, you know, and sports will do that to you, where the game doesn't stop, but, you know, either does life, and those things kind of intersect at times. You know, it's it's not surprising that he's here. We haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. Um, Lauren Sisler, our our sideline reporter, will talk to Scott and company here in a in a little while. But you know, I'm assuming that you know it's one of those moments where this is kind of Eric's quiet place. You know, yeah. he can come here and and sink his teeth into what he's doing today, and you kind of lose track of real life for an instant his dad obviously will be front and center in his mind but his i'm assuming also that his his dad would say do what you're supposed to be doing yeah all right what i'm interested in and what happens is i think the players are going to be lights out for their guy and i think the defense is going to play an inspired game they've been playing well anyway but i think they're going to play an inspired game and you know it's for us in in the media, you know, you have a story, you have a sense of where this is going, and then like our open today completely changes mm-hmm. because we. I said, how, <clears throat> I told my producers, I'm in Starbucks a minute ago. He calls and I'm like, we can't talk football until we acknowledge that tragedy because that's what really life is about. This other stuff is just kind of dressing, and so we will deal with that in the open. We get it from um, game day, so we don't have a long open to discuss anything. But just to acknowledge the fact that this has happened and our hearts um, break for him as well. So, yeah, I, I just think then the game starts and the game's a game. And Minnesota, you know, won't care about those things. And Nebraska has to show up and play. And I think the defense is going to play lights out for their coach. I, I am in agreement with you on that. And prayers and condolences, obviously, from all of us to the Chinander family and, and Coach Chins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yep. Kelly Stoffer uh, with us. Been a us. pleasure, guys. Yeah, it's it great is, to man. see you nice. again. Good man, to see you, yeah, too. We, used to, we, used to, we would watch football together at the mountain. We, do, we had games that we were concentrating on. Huskers might be on, and we'd sit there. They might think be. they're going to do. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. so, so we chatted a lot, and it just is so yeah. great to see you. And yeah. You're so good at what you do, and I'm Thank so you. glad that we, our paths have crossed and that you only had one coffee because if your wife was expecting hers – yeah, when you I, came down I'll here, be back you'd be again. in a lot of trouble. No, I'll, I'll be back again. How are you doing, Darren? <laughs> no, uh, it's good to be with you guys. It's inconvenient for me logistically to get to Lincoln to do this like for home games yeah. because I might be on the road or something, but – if ever I'm in the neighborhood, let's do this again. You're right. awesome. For sure. All right, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Cranach, uh, water you. the plant during the break. All right. <laughs> Don't smoke it. Yeah, yeah let's, let's <laughs> get that drug just, tested yeah, before you, we do anything. I'm giving you luck on your broadcast. I'm giving you luck on your broadcast here. I just think that's a little disturbing when he's actually petting the plant. <laughs> <laughs> we had a disturbing rule. disturbing about petting a plant? <laughs> yeah, we had a Everything. rule about, Got it. about puppet shows, Cranach. All right. Uh, quick timeout. The weekend edition of Hale Varsity Road. <laughs> Show continues, uh, powered by Aero Brokerage, uh, Ferris Financial Group, Hale Varsity here in Minneapolis, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Early to rise with Hale Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Here's Chris Schmidt and Mark Cranach. Great to have you back, Hale Varsity Radio Weekend uh, Road Show here in Minneapolis. Chris Schmidt, uh, Mark Cranach, Bill Dolman, Elijah Herbal. Big thanks to Kelly Stauffer, uh, part of ESPN. Uh, and uh, the uh, Mr. Football Analyst was just great. Great insight, phenomenal takes. He is off to um, the Gopherville. Are there anybody from – is anybody from Minnesota here? Because we it's see a lot of red. People. The drinking coffee. It's all Nebraska people here. Jack Daniels already? That's so good. That is so good. The Bloody Mary bar does open. <laughs> we got a, we got our own countdown going, Cranach, for that. Dolman's just losing it here, Cranach, uh, with the uh, the more the, the P.J. Fleck hate going on. There's a lot I, I of it. Am, yeah. I am so impressed with Nebraska fan. Well, and, and for folks that don't know, last night on Twitter, like n- globally – P.J. Fleck and Nebraska were trending because Nebraska fans were relentlessly telling average to good to hilarious P.J. Fleck jokes. 
What you uh, like Dolman across the Twitter sphere? Tearing up here about what Fleck and uh, gangster rap in a minivan or something <laughs> like that. DJ Fleck listens to gangster rap in his minivan. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? <laughs> somebody and somebody responded like Minnesota tried to fight back. Like Scott well, Frost the, yeah. wears under ruse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one he had? T- took, a t- took his Tesla in for an oil change. <laughs> <laughs> t- tells people he shaves his head. Yeah. Uh, That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, our, yeah. our rewind segment is now audible, which is fine because we were going to rewind with uh, Kelly Stoffer. Uh, we, we did that live. with him. Yeah. One more time. Yeah, he was it, he was good stuff. Um, yeah. Turner Corcoran is going to be with us. Husker uh, left tackle now. Guys, let's let's go there because that'll be pretty important to, for Nebraska football to, to try and get some sort of run game going, but also protect Adrian. Minnesota's not quite Michigan, but Minnesota's decent to, to good off mm-hmm. the edge. And yep. you've got Ben Hart who – is is back at right tackle playing in front of his peeps. He's a Minnesota kid, and then yep. you got Turner going right uh, back to left. So we'll, we'll get Turner's take on things from earlier in the week here before we hit the eight o'clock hour. But I, I we we talk about you know not screwing up today, <laughs> not uh, slamming the the your the, the door on your fingers uh, of momentum, but it's it's really important for that O line and. You know, I think Nebraska, I want your guys' take on this. We'll go around the horn with it. I think Nebraska kind of learned something from last weekend, specifically the second half, and it's been a season of learning. I think Nebraska is going to come out aggressive. They tried to, to body blow Michigan in the first half. It was 13 <laughs> uh and shaky, right? Not that you didn't have chances to score. You did, but you didn't. Nebraska got creative and opened it up, right? I think they try and start out that way today against Minnesota. Well, Minnesota is a team that you can – they're susceptible to the deep ball. They're not great in coverage. They're Look, to put it quite simply, they're a very physical team, mm-hmm. offensively and defensively, Minnesota. But they're not super fleet of foot. I mean, that's honestly across the board. So you can you can get them deep if you want. But you got to also think some of that stuff in the second half Chris worked against Michigan because Nebraska was stubborn in the first half and stuck with Fair. it to have safeties and linebackers creep and then you just go over top of them, right? So um I, I think I think you can see Nebraska coming back to the option a little bit more today due to the speed um, factor. I think the first half is going to fly by because mm-hmm. Minnesota takes the air out of the ball. And I think Nebraska knows with their tackles that have struggled. And I, I'm, I'd be interested to listen to what Turner Corcoran has to say. But, you know, say what you want. They're young. I understand it. I'm not criticizing them. But Benart and, and Corcoran have mightily struggled in pass protection this year. So you don't want to go on the road, <laughs> right? You don't want to go on the road and give up cheapy blindside sacks and things like that. I, I think Nebraska, I think you're somewhat limited because of what you have at the tackle position and because of how many pressures Nebraska has allowed offensively that you're just going to have to stay out of those situations, which means running the ball more, maybe taking a few play action shots. Don't you think Nebraska has uh, enough in its offense at this point that it keeps teams guessing much more than, than uh, and I would say, than Minnesota? Um, Minnesota yeah. has talked about what's going to happen this week. Well, you've lost your, your best running back, maybe the best running back in the country in week one, and you adjust, and then you lose a pretty good back in, was it uh, Trey Potts? You lose him in the Purdue game. And what I've read the last few days up here is that, well, they're going to try and open it up a little bit more. It's like well, you, you've been so cognizant of the run the first four or five games of your year that in an off week, you're not going to be able to revamp your offense. And all of a sudden, Tanner Morgan's going to be dealing it all over the field, yeah. you know, 40 times today against Nebraska. That's just not going to happen. Meanwhile, we have seen since I asked for in the Fordham game more option. 
Nebraska doesn't run it extensively, but they do run it enough that it is a pain in the ass that they have to prepare for every mm-hmm. week. And so I'm sure Minnesota has spent some of their time during their their off week preparing for option principles, which they have not had to worry about the first five weeks of the season. Um, Nebraska has as good a receiving core as there is in the country offensively uh, with Manning's become much more a part Manning, of it. You've got Ture, tight ends. Martin, you've got tight ends yeah. that are you know, phenomenal. So uh, Nebraska's got a lot much, a lot more variety and more weapons to go to offensively to draw upon than does Minnesota. And Minnesota cannot reinvent itself. I just cannot see this in a bye week, especially when you haven't played the toughest schedule in the world like Nebraska has. Guys, I'll say this. Confidence is going to be king today, too. That's typical, but I think it will play out with the winning team whose quarterback is ready to go. And I know you've had a bye week, but Tanner Morgan's not thrown for more than 150 yards. So uh, that, that that's a reality to your point about what do you do offensively here, even with a bye week mixed in. You've been ground and pound your whole life here, or at least this season, you've wanted to be. Uh, and Morgan's a far cry from what he was uh, even two years ago. And that's the kid's dealing with a lot, and he doesn't have the help, so it's not a per se indictment on him it's just he's just not the same guy uh as as a uh a, a pass completer and uh, a guy who gets yards and makes incredible throws we've seen him do that he had a big time win in lincoln last year but i think adrian uh i think we all to a man here i think we feel okay about adrian not having a go in the tank type game after the fumble i, I think he uh, between the years, is ready to bounce back. You guys agree with that? Craig, well, we'll start with you. I was just going to say, not only Adrian, I, I think I have confidence in Scott Frost's ability to, to know this offense and to call a good offense. I mean, we've had issues in the past where you, you've been the, the armchair coach saying, why is Scott Frost calling this? Why is Scott Frost calling this? I've been watching the team this year, and as the season's gone on, it feels like he's gotten a better feel for his offense to be able to call an effective offense. He's been going to the crossing routes a lot, knowing he's got some big body targets to go to that can win their one-on-ones and man coverage coming across the middle. Uh, He's been throwing in that option enough to the point where defenses don't know how to prepare for it. It's tough to be able to prepare for the option as well as all the other things that Nebraska's offense brings. It really feels like Scott Frost and his play calling has has found a rhythm with the the pieces he has on offense this year. I have confidence in Scott Frost to be able to to come into this game with a good game plan to be able to move the ball. And I feel like he's I feel like he can count on the running back position now as, count on Ramir not necessarily to break I but I do feel like and I felt like that against Northwestern and against Michigan I feel like Ramir is inches away from breaking one. Kenny like Bell he's just you. barely missing it cuz I feel like he's executing the play like you should. Right, like he's going to yeah. the right spots. He's bouncing when he needs to bounce. He's keeping it inside me. He, so he's like structurally, I feel like he completely gets it. He's just missing that, ugh, that extra little oomph to maybe turn one into you know a sixteen yarder into a seventy yarder. And he's got the speed to do it. That's the difference. Is he's like well, you saw him blow up, didn't you, with the, the wheel routes? I mean, one hundred five yards yeah. receiving. Yeah, um, yeah. So. This, this could be the day. It, I mean, it, I feel like it will happen for him. I feel like he is a big play running back who has not had a big play yet. <laughs> you know, and I just feel like it's going to come at some point. He's He's been he's been impressed. In fact, I think he's maybe two within the structure right now. He If he loosens up a little bit, relies a little more on instinct, I think he's got a chance to break a few. We need to break or keep going here. Forgive me. Well, we could say hi to Julie's uh, son, who's been yes. celebrating his 21st birthday today. Julie Kroll checks in and says, it's my kid's 21st. Nebraska has to beat Minnesota. Does that yeah. mean if she's in, in Minneapolis, she'll buy her kid a shot? <laughs> well, she can also take him to the, uh, uh, the, the tailgate that's opening up here at 8 o'clock. How so about spread those over... 21 shots, Julie? Spread those 21 shots over the <laughs> course of the day to <laughs> blunt the impact. <laughs> Don't Teach try to pacing. squeeze it all in between 9 and midnight tonight. <laughs> the old two-minute drill, right? <laughs> yeah. Does that come up today? We'll check in with Brandon Vogel from Ale Varsity in uh, a, a little bit. We'll also hear from the Iron Horse, Gary Sharp, with us. 
We may mix in the Turner Corker and rewind before we say goodbye as well next hour. But you're talking about the running backs, and and mm-hmm. and I I think we're all a little surprised that Ramir Johnson from out of nowhere, uh, who was fifth was on the depth chart at the dust. beginning of the year, yes. yeah. um, you know, has become the guy. And at the beginning of the year, you know, the first couple of games, there was three guys rotating in and out, eight nine carries a piece, and everybody's getting 57 yards or 47 yards, and that was that. And then all of a sudden, there's Ramir Johnson. People, are, who is this guy? And he's become the go-to guy. And then Jacques Yant has the big game against Northwestern, has one really bad play against Michigan, and goes back on to the shelf. Now, does he come off the shelf, given his his stature, against a very good run defense? Now, uh, Minnesota has not played again the schedule. Nebraska has. So some of those run numbers are... Uh, I, I think are 77 skewed, yards a game you know, is inflated. Well, well, they gave up 90, 90, minus 19 yards they held Colorado to, which, again, as I told Chris yesterday, I didn't know Minnesota played Colorado because nobody talks about Colorado in Colorado. But uh, does, against that kind of run defense, it's probably pretty confident. Do you put in a guy who is 6'4", 260 pounds, and let him pound the rock inside like he did against Northwestern? I would think maybe you'd see uh, Yant get back in there. Mm. And you wonder hopefully about that too. Yeah, and hopefully you've added more repertoire to. All right, yeah. Here's here's we we know you know five plays. Here's three more this week. But he does look like Fred Flintstone running through Princeton U in uh, 1965. No, he's he's good, man. He's fast. He's got a good combo of uh, size and speed. Who's he remind you of, Cranach? Anybody? I told you, Fred Flintstone against well, Princeton U, 1965. What, what, what Husker? Does oh, he remind okay. You of? My bad. What Husker? Yeah, Ooh. I mean, is he Cl- Clinton Childs a little bit? Fair, good take. Yant? Yeah. A I was shorter say Chris he... Garrett or Will Washington, but uh... <laughs> with the Just dreaded goggles. A, yeah, but he's all like kind of arms and legs. Like you know, he's 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 tough to bring down. He he does not look fun to tackle. Whatsoever, no. uh, he had a yeah, you're, you're element to him where he's size and speed and great feet. He's just got a, a Big Ten back type element to mm-hmm. him. He he he's that traditional Big Ten back where he's three yards in a cloud of dust. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. With with, <laughs> and I think he's pretty instinctive too. I mean, just some of the moves that he had. The stiff arm feels natural. Uh, he's yeah, he's he's got some ability, but you got to know which way you're going. <laughs> You know, like if it's going right, you better be ready to go right. Yeah, otherwise, you're going to get yanked and then you're, you don't get to play. So you, you hope that that works out for him. I, but to your point, Bill, I, you're right. There are enough weapons. And then, Chris, to your point, Frost seems to be sort of dialed in to call in the right uh, kind of the right. Or, I'm sorry, Elijah was saying that about F- F- Frost. Feel, feel, it feels like he's figured the team out. And knows what to call, and knows who to call upon, and in what situations. Like, there, there's a nice little rhythm developing there, and it just it has to continue today. Because if it doesn't, can you imagine the tenor of this no, show? I don't want to imagine a week three from today post game. I do not want to deal with the uh, real red reactions. Always fun to do, just not if when PJ they lose. Fleck <laughs> is victory dancing all over Nebraska today, like. It's not going to go back to Twitter and see what else we can yes, find here. Uh, uh, he always goes to Chick-fil-A on Sundays. Right, because it's closed. <laughs> uh, ask for his PB&J to be cut into triangles without crust. <laughs> that is Mark Cradack, <laughs> Bill Goldman, Elijah Herbal, Chris Schmidt. Roadshow Saturday here uh, at the Graduate Minneapolis, powered by uh, Ferris Financial Group, Aero Brokerage, a timeout. Hour two coming up here, getting you ready for kickoff, Nebraska, Minnesota with Hale Varsity Radio. The Hale Varsity Radio Saturday Morning Show, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Strap yourselves in. Here are your hosts, Chris Schmitz. Y'all don't even know he was a virgin until he's 28, and now, roll tide. And Mark Cranach. Time has come for someone to put his foot down. And that foot is me. Welcome to it. It's Hour 2. It's Hale Varsity Radio. We are on the road here. Minneapolis, the graduate, not far from Gopher Stadium. Chris Schmidt, Mark Cranach, Bill Dolman, Elijah Herbal. And uh, good stuff from Kelly Stauffer, part of the ESPN broadcast, was with us in Hour 1 on site. We are here in the lobby of the graduate, and Real Red Reaction immediately follows Nebraska-Minnesota. We'll be 
here for the post game and excited to see where Nebraska is at. We talk momentum and you talk progress and it, it will be shown in the uh, on the scoreboard today if you're Nebraska football getting a road win that has eluded you uh, not just this season but beyond and uh, this is a, a winnable game and at the onset of this week it's it's not just a winnable game but it's a, a can't lose game numbers to get in four six six three seven seven six or eight hundred eight two five five eight six five. Uh, plenty of folks chiming in here as we stream live. StreamYard helping us out with uh, ESPN Lincoln's Facebook page and a lot of storylines to get into. Cranach, I wasn't sure. I'm, I'm staring at you on the StreamYard, Cranach. You've got your Braves hat on. I do. Big Atlanta guy. You've loved Atlanta since the Dale Murphy era. And uh-huh. the uh, you've got that lid going. We've given you plenty of guff about your plant. <laughs> and right. and you're just there. It's like, oh no! Did, did the Cranach video feed freeze? And then I see you move your eyes. So you're doing okay. You're, yeah. You're no, I was play. just locked in. Um, yeah, I'll keep moving, just so you know. I think a steely-eyed, focused, and determination that we're seeing That's from Mark Cranach this morning. Similar to Nebraska football. Well, no, yeah. it, it comes down to yeah. Mark's Buddhist training. You ever seen Batman? Where like he has to like go up into the mountains like that, that was that was yeah. Mark's hero's journey here to, to to bring him to the show this morning. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. There's a lot of truth there. But, uh, things I never knew that would happen in life is me petting a bamboo plant and Kelly Stoffer commenting on that. <laughs> um, but that happened this morning. That happened this morning. You just if keep it was away, Cranac. Yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, bring in Brandon Vogel from HailVarsity.com and Magazine. He wants nothing to do with this conversation. Vogue's uh, the managing editor for Hail Varsity. His book with John Cook, Dream Like a Champion, at Brandon L. Vogel on Twitter. Vogue's, how is your Saturday morning? What's going on, bud? I'm doing well. Um, for one, I'm, I'm honored to be part of such a one-of-a-kind radio show. You think about all of the college pregame shows that are going to happen today. I'm reasonably confident that this is the only one that will include two alumni from the Panhandle Athletic Conference. So, congrats <laughs> to all of us here. <laughs> That's right. So, Vogues, was Rushville a, um, a rival? Yeah, they were. My high school football coach was actually Kelly Stoffer's backup at Rushville High School at quarterback. So, when we were playing football, I heard a lot of stories from our head coach about Kelly Stoffer. Normally, it was like, why can't you guys do this? Kelly Stoffer was great at it. Folks, did you play quarterback by chance? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, so I, I, was, I, I played receiver, so I was more over my coach's shoulder be like, yeah, why can't you guys give me the ball? <laughs> <laughs> When's the next sixth round or number six pick in the NFL draft going to come through Rushville? Yeah, <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's good. So I've got a food question for you, Vogues, and then we'll go around the horn. This uh, Tim Bob brought it up to me. He's part of Real Red Reaction afterwards as well. He is going beef stew today. Can 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 we can we have a discussion? Because it is we're in we're in Minneapolis here. It's crisp, dare I say? We're talking upper thirties in Lincoln, uh, in Omaha, in in in, in, in in Minneapolis. That first fall feel. Can we have a serious conversation about stew versus chili? Ooh. We we can. Um, I might be. It's it's a it's a close race. I, I would make like Nebraska today. I would make beef stew about a three and a half point favorite over chili for me. Um, it it uh, it hasn't quite gotten cold enough for me yet to to break out the beef stew. But I've been waiting. Um, I, I I like the uh, well one. I, I I like beef stew, but the opportunity to just kind of throw whatever fall vegetables you have in there, I think is what does it for me. I just Look. love the, the saltiness of the, of the, of the beef stew, Cranach. You're Cranach, you and Vogue's both are like world champion chili guys though. Yeah. I, look, I, I think beef stew has a place if somebody just gives it to you, but the amount of effort you have to put into <laughs> making a good one compared to the payoff flavor that you experience is not worth it. 
if you're going to go through that oh, level man. of preparation and chopping and mixing, you got to go chili because it's got that kind of kick. And But beef stew, come on. I just, I mean, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. But it, <laughs> there's, there's other things you can do with your time. I, I guess the the old the, the the vaunted pot roast in the crock pot mm. with the vegetables and and a little bit of the uh, the au jus. You get the onion, the potato. I know that's not technically Stu Vogues and Cranach and Billy D and, and Elijah, but that's what I think of. I go there with just that thick goodness. Here's my problem. All right, uh, the only time I get great chili is if my brother-in-law, Uncle Andy, makes it. Because when my wife makes chili, it's garbage. There's 4,000 (laughs) beans. It's not spicy. And uh, we can't use too much meat, uh, let alone add a little pork for the flavor if you're a Goodfellas fan. Looks like we're staying in Minneapolis another night or two because uh, Schmitty won't be able to go home. Uh, look, here, here's my thing on it. And I am pro beef stew, okay? I, I, I am, you know, it's, it's like I don't have a favorite team. I'm pro beef stew. I, I vote for interesting. But I have been away from Nebraska long enough that I am, I would love to have a nice Nebraska meal of chili and cinnamon rolls, Mm -hmm. which nobody outside of the state of Nebraska, and perhaps nobody outside of a small town in Nebraska, fully appreciates the combination of the chili and the cinnamon roll. And you tell Mm -hmm. that to somebody else, like in Texas or Colorado or other places where I've been, it's like, oh, yeah, chili and cinnamon rolls. It's like, well, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Only we know the, the the great combination that it is. And so right now in this conversation, I'm thinking I I would probably lay the three and a half and take the chili. Mm, I, I totally agree with, yeah, and I would. And yeah, the cinnamon Three and a half. I, I, I think chili is like a 12-point favorite here. Like, you know, I mean, just. And by the way, quick little tip. Some people overthink chili sometimes, right? Like, it, ultimately, you're looking for that. It's kind of Tex-Mex-ish, right? That's sort of what you're yeah, looking yeah. for. The easiest way to bring the Mex part of it, one can of red enchilada sauce. Mm. Red and, ooh. Mm. Right? Just just See, put that in there. I just need Put that in there. Let it do its thing. And hey, here's here's something that, that I like, and I think it's kind of a, a, a more recent phenomenon. I appreciate people who make good chili as a base, but then will put the uh, will put a dish of sweet uh, sour cream, a dish of cheese, a dish of chopped up onions, so that you can put a little more paint to the palate, if you will, uh, yeah. at your own and flavor it on your own with the with the good chili base. I, I will always appreciate that, and uh, you know and. People will put a variety of things out there for you. Mm-hmm. Brandon Vogel is with us. Uh, Hale Varsity right now. Uh, managing editor, back to football. I had to throw out the food question, Vogues, because you're... That's what's important. You are go-to when it comes to, to barbecuing and chili in stew. Uh, keeping with the stew discussion point, Nebraska's run game is what ingredient to the stew today for a win on the road? Tarragon. If it, Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it, if, it can, if it can be the potatoes, uh, I think that's probably a good spot for – I mean, that, that's probably the most likely spot for the run game. If it's the beef, if it has uh, center stage, so to speak, well, that would be a very good development. I, I'd be a little bit surprised if that's the case. Um, though, though maybe. I mean, you look at this Minnesota rush defense – Ohio State ran for seven yards of carry on them, and, you know, that's Ohio State, and, and nobody else really has. But all the, the remaining four offenses Minnesota's faced so far are all averaging less than 24 points a game and rank 100 or lower. So Nebraska's definitely the best kind of offensive outfit I think the Gophers have seen since playing the Buckeyes. I just haven't seen enough of Nebraska with that consistency in the run game to think, well, yeah, they just come in, they lean on that, and and it's going to be that kind of game. So I kind of look at the Huskers probably have to throw a little bit, open that up. If they have success doing that, I'm confident they'll be able to move the ball pretty consistently as the game goes on. Brandon Vogel with us on – oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Cranach, my bad. Brandon Vogel with us on, on Hale Varsity Radio. To that end, we were talking a little bit about it um, with Ramir 
Johnson seemingly grabbing hold of that number one running back position. Um, to everybody's surprise, if you rewind six, seven weeks, nobody would have guessed that. But here he is, and he's got it. Do you get the same sense, Brandon, watching him? I, I feel like in the Northwestern game and in the Michigan game, I mean, the guy is just inches away from breaking some big ones, and it feels like he is a big play back who has not broken a big play yet. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty close. I, I I don't know if I've seen enough out of him yet that he, you just look at him like, oh, that's a big play machine. But he's got big play ability, and you you've seen kind of hints of it. Uh, you saw one really nice run against Michigan last week, and his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield as well, which is something that has emerged over the last two games. It, adds to that. So you kind of look at the whole picture with Johnson, and we know, you know, he was reportedly fit on the depth chart, as Coach Ross said, uh, to, to start the year. He kind of does all the things I think they want a running back to be able to do in this offense. So I do feel like he's going to continue to, to show a little bit more each week, and this would certainly be a great spot for him to have that breakout game. I think he's been right about 67, 75 yards each of the last three three games. It feels like a matter of time before he finally can get that, that three-digit day. Brandon, what do you make of Adrian Martinez's decreased usage in the run game as the season's gone on? It felt like he was the almost a feature back at times for this Nebraska offense in the first couple games of the season. Uh, but it feels like every single game since then, it feels like uh, he's been being used less and less in that run game, and he's even been scrambling less and keeping his eyes downfield. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good development for Nebraska because the threat of what Adrian Martinez can do there never leaves. And, you know, all of the coaches kind of mention this and it, when they're in their Nebraska week, the opposing coaches, and you know you have to account for him. And we've seen um, when, when Nebraska ends up in these kind of high leverage plays, uh, they're still more likely than not to just kind of put the ball in Adrian's hands because it gives them the best shot. And some of those plays haven't gone the Huskers' way, unfortunately. But that's the type of player he is. If Nebraska can move the ball without having to rely on that, because you're right, a lot of times, well, specifically earlier in this season, but all of the seasons that came before it, he has felt like, well, this is the offense. The less he runs, the more I think it's a sign of, okay, Nebraska's able to execute some stuff and exploit some matchups other places. Brandon Vogel is with us. Hail Varsity Radio is a weekend edition here at the Graduate uh, on the road here getting ready for Nebraska-Minnesota. Well, I, I think I think the comparison that it keeps coming to my mind is Nebraska taking on Michigan State a few weeks ago. And, and I, if Nebraska gives that kind of effort, and especially offensively, I think that's when the defense really established itself. But I think if Nebraska's offense looked like it did against Michigan State, there was less reliance necessarily on Adrian running the ball, as Brandon was just saying. They started to utilize more people, distribute the ball to different receivers, ran the ball. Every, everything just seemed to click against Michigan State, against the most wayward punt in the history of college football. Uh, I, I think if you get that kind of effort today... Nebraska wins and probably wins handily because the opponent isn't as good as that team in, in East Lansing. But Brandon, I, I, I want uh, to shift gears on you, and this will speak to your observation of Nebraska's character and the, the, the tragedy, the tragic news that we heard yesterday with Eric Shenander's father passing away. And I, I don't want to get into the, the intangible of how this is going to play out on the field or whatever, but I'm just talking about the, the character of the team. And I mentioned the word, I think Nebraska will play honorably for their coach. But you're around it. You cover Nebraska. What do you think their character is in the wake of that news and how they perform today? Yeah, I think honorably is a good word for that. I, I, I really do. Uh, you know, Scott Frost has been saying consistently, really since spring football, that this is, you know, his favorite group yet. He's, he's talked about how tight-knit the group is. In the week leading up to this game, he called it his most grown-up team. And I think you'll see that sort of effort, um, given the tragedy that happened to the to the Shenander family. And for, for Coach Shenander specifically, you know, these things are terribly, terribly difficult. I hope that these couple of hours on Saturday can kind of be the solace or the the, the kind of moment of silence when so much is going on around you 
that that he needs. Um, and, and I think it I think it will be that you know these things are always difficult because kind of the world doesn't stop, even though yours personally has in, in, a, in a, a degree that you, you don't want to have to experience very often. But sometimes that can be what you need. And I, and I hope that's the case for, for Coach Shenander and for Nebraska football as they rally around him today. It's Brandon Vogel with us, HailVarsity.com and Magazine Managing Editor, his book with John Cook, Dream Like a Champion. We're on the road here in Minneapolis, uh, just across the way from Gopher Stadium. In the lobby, lobby of the graduate, uh, Bill Dolman on site with me, Mark Cranach back in Nebraska along with Elijah Herbal. Bogues, of course, holding it down uh, with his analysis and recap. Uh, Bogues, last thought before we get you out of here. Is this uh, a, another story in the, the Tanner Morgan saga where he kind of finds himself against Nebraska He's been really good the last couple of outings. Last year, uh, 20 people down, and he helped will that team with, with Mo carrying the football to a win. 34-7, to seven, that really springboarded this Minnesota team to an 11-2 finish. It's got to be on Nebraska's mind defensively, right? Keep Morgan just in this funk he's been in. Yeah, I would think so. Um, it's He is a really good barometer of – how Minnesota is doing and we've seen him you know this is his third year as a full-time starter and and you look at kind of the box scores for Minnesota games how well he does in the passing game and now we know Minnesota wants to run the ball as much as they can like they're happiest if if Morgan is at about 20 pass attempts in a game and at that at that kind of threshold he can be pretty efficient and if he is Minnesota tend to win the football game. So kind of watching how much Minnesota has to throw and, you know, with running back situation, I guess there's a a sliver of me that thinks, well, they could come having a bye week to prepare and and throw it a lot more than they have so far this season. But I just don't know if that's the way they want to win and if that's the best way for them to. So if if we get, you know, to halftime in this, and those pass attempts are creeping up for the Gophers, that's probably a pretty good sign for Nebraska unless, you know, Morgan's like 13 of 15 at the half. Then you know you've got some problems, and the scoreboard will probably reflect that. Give me a score for the, uh, for the ball game, folks. Yeah, I, I expect Nebraska to come out and, and kind of handle, handle itself pretty well in this. I'd be probably around 31-21 Nebraska. Okay, Vogue says by 10. Brandon, uh, decide, and either choice will be money, uh, chili or stew for you. And uh, we'll, we'll get a report here uh, next week. Vogue, thanks for the time today, bud. All right, thanks a lot. There he is, Brandon Vogel with us, uh, Hale Varsity Radio. You know, Cranex uh, got the, the Wall of Fame at Duffy's for three chili championships in college. Oh, congratulations. Well, for really one. Good. I, I have three chili championships on my resume. Just won it at Duffy's, though. Okay, gotcha. Wait, so yeah. You're, like, actually on the wall? Uh, well, not they have the, a, Not the they bathroom have a, wall. <laughs> they have a champion's <laughs> cup, and, there, and there's engravings on it, and I'm, I'm engraved on there. Yeah. That's right. He's got his own uh-huh. fishbowl, baby. So, the very, by the way, one of the most embarrassing things ever, the very next year I come back to defend my title. Uh-huh. And they go and they make the announce. Right, they're they're announcing like third place, second place, first place. They're like, and in first place, a repeat winner, Mark. And then it was like Fredericks. I, mean, I had already gotten up and started my strut. Oh <laughs> no! Just, but it was a different Mark that was also defending the title. So that was very embarrassing. My God! Yeah, you were just he had beer in hand. You were gonna mosey oh, on seriously. up. Oh, seriously. I was six ah. deep. I was six just made deep. A quick, just like, oh, I'm crushing this chili game. I got my whole life ahead of me. Quick turn to go to the can is what you did. You recovered. Now i got to use up. my degree. Yeah. I know. Uh, that was the whole thing. I, I thought he was like, going pro no in chili. That, I had no idea Hold that chili up. was my future, but it's confirmed. And then it all fell apart in like You're four good. seconds. The Iron Horse is going to be with us, Gary Sharp, shortly. Perhaps time for a rewind with Turner Corcoran. Hail Varsity Road Show Weekend. We're here in Minneapolis as uh, Nebraska, Minnesota at 11.
And uh, we're powered by your friends at Ferris Financial Group and Aero Brokerage sending us on the road one more time. Real Red Reaction follows here from The Graduate as uh, we'll be on around three or just when the game finishes. But Gary Sharp up next with Hale Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Glad to have you back. Yes, sir. You heard me right. Here are the guys, Schmidt and Cranach. Well, Hector, here's the game plan. We're going to bring us two absolute martinis. You know how I like them straight up. And then precisely seven and one half minutes after that, you're going to bring us two more. And then two more after that every five minutes until one of us passes out. Excellent strategy, sir. Back with your weekend edition, Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery and powering us on the road. Aero Brokerage, Ferris Financial Group, Chris Schmidt, Bill Dolman in Minneapolis, and uh, Mark Cranach, Elijah Herbel, Gary Sharp back in Nebraska. And uh, we say hi to the Iron Horse, Gary Sharp. Sharpie, true or false? Uh, P.J. Fleck does ask for price checks at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> and you know what? You remember when Nebraska-Minnesota was, uh, when Nebraska joined the Big Ten, it was nice and sleepy. It was just good old, nice, your <laughs> Uncle Jerry Kale. And then P.J. Yes. Fleck comes along, and everybody gets, like, enraged anytime you hear the name where you see him. <laughs> That's true. Despite the window dressing, though, I appreciate how his team plays, plays yeah, ball. Good. Well, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't deny. Now, here's a couple of things, though. You can't deny that he has changed the culture of Minnesota football. Uh, but he's a very – if you ask a Minnesota fan, he's very polarizing because, yes, they had the 11-2 2019 season where they had a lot of talent and they played really, really well and kind of his culture kicked in. But it was also kind of the key players were left over from the previous regime. Since that 11-2 and two season, you take that out, he is a game below 500 as the football coach mm-hmm. at Minnesota. So while we've all talked about where Nebraska's going and how important this game is going into a bye, Minnesota's looking at the next four games, which include this one, Illinois, Northwestern, and Maryland. And they're kind of at a fork in the road trying to figure out what's going on in 2021 because people want to buy into Minnesota football, and they're kind of in, and they're excited, and he makes them relevant. But, boy, they got to win football games, and they got to win football games like today because they perceive Nebraska either with them or below them. And I think Nebraska perceives them the same way. So if you're trying to make progress for both of these programs, you win games like this. You don't have a clunker. Mm. You know, I mentioned Mm -hmm. this yesterday. I I feel like that this is a program that that he has built a fort around, and they really don't care what people think about what goes on inside the program. They're going to do their thing. They'll take whatever criticism there is, not listen to it. However... That door swings one way, and if there's something for him to to sneak out, be it USC or Florida State or whatever, uh, he'll take that boat and row it someplace else. I, I I think people here probably get that sense too that, it, and like you're talking, it's a different culture. That uh, can they buy into a guy that they're not sure is going to be here in the long term? And then of course the other thing is games over today, and then there's the Viking games tomorrow, and nobody thinks yep. about the Gophers until next Saturday. Yeah, that's the, that, that's the challenge, Bill. You know big major markets where you have college programs that are good, but they're not front-page news. Uh, I think he's got a good relationship with his athletic director. And, and here's the thing about P.J. Fleck down the road, is if you bring him into your program, you turn the entire program over to him with his row-the-boat mentality. Like the, the marketing is different, the message is different, the uniform is different. You have to be willing to do that. Um, I think he's got his own way of doing things. And the thing with Minnesota fans, they got Tim Brewster. First of all, they, they, they love Glenn Mason. Then they got Tim Brewster, who was uh, kind of a salesman, but he didn't have results on the field. And then they got kind of a Minnesotan, and Jerry Kill came in. And then they went to Fleck, and all of a sudden it went from 33 on the old record player to 45, and then it would skip ahead. And people are like, whoa, <laughs> he gave them the 19th season. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, Minnesota is recruiting. They're aggressive. But I, I don't know about this Minnesota team. I'm, they're good defensively against the run, but I'm amazed. And I know, they've, you know they lost one of the best running backs in college football, but I'm amazed they haven't been able to move the ball down the field through the air. I think that's where Nebraska has a strength. But I, I don't see this game as a toss-up or a, a, a close win by Nebraska. I think if Nebraska plays like they have, guys, over the last month, I think Nebraska finds a way to win by 10 two touchdowns. 
I would just like to add, you mentioned the 33s and 45s in the record player. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I'll draw, I will draw you a picture a little bit later, Elijah. Thank you. <laughs> Gary Sharp with us, the Iron Horse, Sale Varsity Radio, uh, getting ready for Nebraska and uh, Minnesota. So, Sharpie, let's dive in a little bit here to a couple of thoughts on, on Nebraska. What, what does Nebraska take with them on the road to Minnesota, what what positives travel from uh, from a, an, an incredible event in atmosphere last Saturday? Well, I don't think they're down on the dauber. You know, it's kind of like, oh, we lost, but it didn't like crush them. Where you you saw like the same same personality traits the week before that you saw this week. So I think they'll be able to handle that well. I think this is a mature team, and especially with an older group of players and their leadership is better. And I, I think the head coach, when he says two years ago, we're going to pour everything into this, and then they get absolutely curb stomped and embarrassed in Minnesota, he says basically the same thing two years later. And I think he feels better because they have leadership that they're not going to let him down. And I think this is a team that knows how vitally important this game is. Guys, there is a gigantic gap, not just one game, but a gigantic gap going into a bye week at 4-4 four and four compared to 3-5. and five. Whether you're thinking about getting the 6 to get to a bowl game, it's just the whole feel of what next week would be like when you're sitting there not playing, when you're 3-5, and five, and how long do you keep saying, man, we're a good football team? Then it gets, okay, why can't we win? But I like Nebraska's chances today. And I don't, you know, Nebraska hasn't had that clunker outside of kind of the opener. They've been kind of steady Eddie. But I think this is a day against an opponent that if you're showing progress, again, Minnesota is either perceived to be on your level or you're better than them. And I think Nebraska is the second best team in the West. These are teams that you beat and you do it comfortably. Touchdown, 10 points, two touchdowns or more. Gary Sharp with us on Hale Varsity Radio. You know this loss to Michigan. I equate it to a couple of other, a couple of other losses in Nebraska's history where the reaction from the fan base um, was one of actual confidence, even though you lose. So you, I think it's '93 Florida State. Nebraska loses that. It's crushing. You don't want, but everybody sort of walked out of that stadium knowing, like, dude, this program's going to be tough to deal with next couple of years. <laughs> like, there are some things in place. Wow. 2008 Texas Tech, Nebraska yeah, on the road. Good call. Good Joe call. Gans sends it to overtime. Yeah. It's a loss too, but it's like, man, no, Nebraska really showed something there. I, I think this last Michigan game was the same way because you know, as as fans empty out, there's a certain tenor of what fans are talking about. You hear groans or you hear, uh, you know, people just like cussing or. It was pretty quiet. It was pretty subdued and pretty positive. Do you think that's a that's an accurate response from Nebraska fans that they should have walked out of that Michigan game feeling like you know what things are probably going to be okay? Yes and no. Uh, I think people can see that this program has found kind of an identity, and that can be a good thing and a bad thing. They found an identity that they're going to play hard. They're physical. They're starting to correct some mistakes on the fly. But then there's the other part that continues to plague Nebraska in games that are tight affairs, whether it be game clock personnel management at the same time. Just the the things that could go wrong go wrong, where you focus on one play, but you go back and some of the bad plays start to add up through the course of the game. I think it just shows you Mark and and Bill and Elijah and Schmidt where where this program is on how we consume a loss to Michigan. Because in the past, It would take you a week to get over something like that. I mean, that was the opportunity, the crowd, the moment, the team you were playing, the way you came back after being down 13-11 at the break. I think it just shows where Nebraska football is not able to get over that hump, but at least you can see that hump. You know, you're standing at the base of the mountain, and you know you've got to climb it, but it's been a long time since you've been able to get to, you know, the, the base of the mountain. And now how do you climb up and over that? That's why Nebraska has another opportunity for the next two games to help themselves because then they get even a bigger opportunity 
on November 6th when Ohio State comes to town, but you got to take care of business today. But you're right. I think we were all, you know, the past week kind of trying to gauge everybody's reaction. It's kind of different. You thought people would be upset. You'd be, they'd be ticked off. Instead, they're like, okay, I'm kind of encouraged, disappointed, but I'm encouraged on where Nebraska is right now. And it may have to do with blowout syndrome that we've all had. But in games like that in the past, you've gotten routed when you're down 13 love. And instead, Nebraska made a game of it and had a chance to win. Gary Sharp's with us here on Hale Varsity Radio. Gary, over the past couple years, I mean, you're right, this year's team feels different, but over the past couple years, Nebraska's had a regression game or two every single year. Uh, Two years ago, it was Purdue, uh, or you could also say Indiana, and and then last year you had uh, the Illinois game as well as the Minnesota game. Do you think this year's team is different and they can avoid those regression games, or or do you still think that this team is prone to make the errors that are going to cost them in a game such as this Minnesota game or such as Purdue next week or maybe even Wisconsin in a couple weeks? Elijah, that's a great unknown. You're dealing with 18 to 24-year-old kids. And they're going to have that one or two games during the year where you're off and you don't look right. And you hope you're good enough to win those kind of games. And Nebraska really hasn't had that clunker yet. I I think with this group, they're talented enough, but need to learn how to win and win games where you go and take it or you pull away. But I think they've been able to avoid the clunker because they got good leadership. They're an older group, you know, that old adage, get old, stay old in college uh, athletics. Nebraska's been able to accomplish that. And I think, guys, I think another thing that helps where Nebraska has avoided that, guys, is they're, you know, they're, they're kind of they're, they're very consistent, um, and they don't ride the EKG of week to week. Even after Northwestern, did you guys feel like Nebraska was sky high and they had made it? Or even after this past week against Michigan, I don't think there's any time during the week that when we all talk to players and coaches, they were like, oh, man, this is awful. So I don't think they ride the wave. So I think they've been able to avoid the clunker. And that's why I think you'll see the same team that played last Saturday, the Saturday before, the Saturday before, the Saturday before, beginning in Norman. You'll see them out there today. And it's just the opponent that is in front of you. If you execute, you're good enough that you win football games like this. Gary Sharp is with us, Sale Varsity Radio Weekend. Here in Minneapolis at the graduate ahead of Nebraska, Minnesota, Mark Cranach, Chris Schmidt, uh, Elijah Herbal, Bill Dolman, the Brad of Fairbury with us, Gary Sharp, the Iron Horse on the Horn. Sharpie, is this game on the offense or the defense today for the Big Red? Well, I think you're going to see the emotions on the defense. You know, Eric Chenander losing his father. There is, we've seen this throughout the entire year and really kind of going back to last year. They've developed quite the bond on defense. Again, it's an older group, but they have such a trust of what Eric Chenander is calling that they don't second-guess it, and they are in sync with each other. But I think you can truly, when you hear players talk about their defensive coordinator, it's a true love. They love their defensive coordinator. They love him as a person. They love him as a coach. And I think you'll see that emotion today. I, I I can't even imagine what Eric Chenander is going to be like sitting upstairs after losing his father, who was a football coach that is so important in his life, and he's got to focus at, on the task at hand. So I think you'll see a lot of emotion out of this football team, and especially on the defensive side. But I think today, guys, this is where the offense gets to show off a little bit. If you look at how people have beaten Minnesota, they have done it not with great offenses. I mean, they've moved the ball on Minnesota, but they've done it through the air. If you go back and look at Adrian Martinez against Minnesota in his two starts, he didn't play in the game at 19. He was on the sidelines. Federal started that miserable uh, nighttime game. Mm-hmm. His first game, one of the best games I think Adrian Martinez has ever played, was his first game and the first win by Scott Frost back in 18. He threw for nearly 300 yards. He was 25 of 29. And then last year, remember, he was not the guy. Adrian plays and plays pretty well. Plus, he's an option quarterback, which Minnesota – they publicly admitted, man, we don't see that. We kind of have trouble with that. So I think this is a big day for Adrian Martinez and Torre. I think the wide receivers will show up and play well. It's just what does the offensive line 2.0 resetting with Corcoran and Ben Hart, are they able to hold off a pretty stout defensive uh, front seven for Minnesota, give Martinez time? Because if they do, I think the option game and I think the downfield passing game will be really good for Nebraska. I expect Martinez to have a big, big day as long as the wind doesn't pick up inside of a really you know, wide-open stadium and cause havoc. But I, I think it's a big day for the offense, and I think that's the reason why Nebraska wins. 
It's chilly here, speaking of chilly in our earlier segment, <laughs> but it, it, is, uh, it is chilly, it is brisk, and as people have been coming in and out of the hotel here, which is just a little bit away from the uh, stadium, the weather, I, I don't think it's going to be a huge factor in the game. The wind was something that they had talked about earlier, but if Nebraska decides to option left, option right, and try to hammer Ramir Johnson up the middle like they did against Michigan, a few too many plays last week, uh, I, I wouldn't think that it's going to be that, that big of a factor today. But I think well, Nebraska. I think Nebraska's defense has been so good, basically all season long. And if this again, I go back to the Michigan State game. If Nebraska gives that kind of effort on the road, they're going to win. I think they're going to win it easily. So here, here's how I look at how this game has to unfold. So Minnesota having the bye week, they probably done some self scouting. They've been able to start the game plan without pots at running back and whoever they may use a trio of running backs. They get right back the transfer wide receiver from Texas A&M. Uh, they already have Autumn Bell, who appears to be healthier. They don't throw the ball down the field. Um, they are the they have the fewest pass attempts outside of any true option team in college football. I think it's important for Nebraska to get on them early and stay on them instead of making this a four quarter football game. But if I'm Minnesota guys, I'm trying to figure out how are they going to score on Nebraska's defense. And then if they do score, do they have the ability to just bleed the game? Because I think this will be a low-possession game, and it will be a game of field position. And if that's the case, then Minnesota has a chance. But I still don't know how they're going to score points on this defense. If, if this is going to be a game where you've got to score three touchdowns, I don't know that I have a lot of faith that Minnesota's going to be able to score three touchdowns on this defense. Flipping it around, Sharpie, if, if Nebraska can't put up more than three touchdowns, Man, uh, the state will be on fire. I mean, it just, it just will be because you felt progress. You put up 29 second-half points against Michigan. You put up 56 against Northwestern, uh, even though it wasn't a, an offensive explosion against Sparty or Oklahoma. You did have some, some answer drives, right? So uh, it'll be interesting to see where, where this, this offense is and their progress. Uh, in, in this 2021 season, uh, we think we we think and we know Adrian's uh, built to last. You know that there's better skill skill uh, talent. Uh, we got some fist pumping going on here by Huster fans in the lobby. Uh, but you also have that that 2.0 that's that's a reality, and I'm interested to see how Ben Hart responds in his home state. Well, last year he was absolutely horrible against his in-state team. I mean, there, there's no. There's no trying to go, well, you know, no, he was really, really bad last week. When he came in, he was able to hold his own, but this is important for him because he's going to be at that position the rest of the year. It's, I mean, it's a downer that Teddy is out for the year, and mm-hmm. it's going to be a long rehab for him. He had the whole alphabets that he uh, crossed off in his knee injury. But this has been our kind of guys not only trying to get back and secure his spot for the rest of the year, but he's kind of playing for next year. Because remember, Prohaska is going to come back, and he's going to be one of your starting tackles. And then Lutowski, who is redshirting, has a chance to be one of your starting guards. Um, you might be playing for your spot on the 22 lineup. So, you know, do you get caught up in the emotion? Falk and Ben Hart say what everybody says. Iowa guys come back to Nebraska and say, same thing. you didn't recruit us, I hate you, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But you've got to go out and back it up. And I, I think Nebraska will try it rely on him but it's important because if it doesn't work guys where do you turn to next i mean nebraska's down some linemen banks and, and bando you know is ezra miller ready to go it's just it's one of those things where this offensive line they just need to grind and get through this week and get to the bye that's another important point no no point during this week did i feel like nebraska's just like oh my gosh eight games in eight weeks they hit us to the bye they're not thinking that way. They're not acting that way. They know how important this game is because, again, 4-4 four and four compared to 3-5, and five, it's not just one game. It's a monstrous gap. Gary, Sh- Gary Sharp- Sharpie, who is jumping on? Sorry. Krennic, that Elijah. That was – that was me, but I, you know. No, do it. Do it. Doesn't have to be me. Okay. Uh, Gary, you know, Trev Albert spoke at length in an ESPN article um, about Scott Frost. And one thing he, and he basically voiced his support for him. Um, and one thing he said that I found interesting was 
he said the hardest thing when you're flipping a culture is to find that fight in the team. Like you can teach fundamentals and all that, but it's really about does your team want to squab? <laughs> Do they want to fight the other the other team? And he's saying he sees that now. As we go back over everything that has ailed Nebraska, do you think that is the trait that has been missing the most recently? And do you agree with Trev that that fight is now there and it's embedded and you move forward? Yes. And let me give you an example, Mark. Great question. Look at some of the stuff that was said after the game the last time Nebraska rolled it rolled into Minneapolis. The hoodie gate, the I want to I only want to coach a team that is uh, more physical. There were if you compare 2 years ago to where Nebraska is today, it is different. And I do see that fight. I also see this part. There are there are two key things about last Saturday night. And it's kind of as this season has unfolded. You don't you haven't gotten that feeling or you've lost it where Nebraska is just going to turtle in games which they face adversity, where they're just going to, it's over, and then it becomes an onslaught. I think another key thing, and again, I, I, I agree with Trent, there is more fight in this team, is they have gone from, and, and it's a results-based business, I get it, they've got to turn this stuff into wins, or it's just kind of hollow. Because I think when Scott said, I knew we were going to win, that's different. Instead of, I think we're going to win, or I think we can win, he said, I knew we were going to win until the fumble and the end of the game. I haven't heard that before, and I don't think it's just him. I think it's players, but you wonder when you talk that way and you don't get validated for it, how long can you go? That's why a bounce back today victory is vitally important for Nebraska. But I think there's subtle signs that they have, they have been able to overcome and fix, but there are some of the glaring things that are still there that ail this team from instead of walking into Minneapolis, not at three and four, they're walking in at, let's say, six and one or five and two. Gary Sharp. Sharpie, enjoy your Saturday. Thanks for the inside, brother, and uh, joining us uh, for another Saturday. Appreciate you making the time, bud. Thanks, guys. Enjoy uh, torpedoing the uh, boats. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Gary Sharp with us, the Iron Horse. Real Red Reaction coming up from uh, Minneapolis here in The Graduate following Nebraska and uh, Minnesota. Chris Schmidt, Bill Dolman, Elijah Herbel, uh, and, of course, uh, Tim Bob going to be part of that. Krynak, uh, we are we are about ready to pack up and head over to uh, Gopherville. Water your ficus. <laughs> figure, figure out what you're doing with the, the chili or... The, the stew, uh, just awesome stuff today from Brandon Vogel, from Gary Sharp, from uh, Bill Dolman's uh, dear friend uh, and uh, first-round guy, Kelly Stoffer uh, joined us on site. He's doing color. Come on up here on ESPN2. Coach Brett emails in and uh, says the graduate old fashions are incredible. And uh, <laughs> Can I should have several of them. Can also uh, confirm. Starting to get going. So, yeah. Elijah, are you... Uh, you locked in for today? What do you mean? Uh, what I mean is, like, do you have your, your game plan, your food and alcohol He's going to try and off. figure out what a 33 and a 45 are. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going to go home. Uh, World-famous mac and cheese? No, I'm probably just going to make some coffee. I don't know. <laughs> I, I hey. really lame and boring. In, in terms right of game plan, hard, not, not all that much. i gotta come back, I got to come back here in three hours and do the post-game show. Same, so. oh, same, right? There, there. Krenak, what are you doing? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to find a place to watch the game with some, uh, with some friends around here based on food, uh-huh. based on good food and not ridiculous super spreader crowds. That's the idea. Okay. I, I oh, do have yeah. all the ingredients to make Philly cheesesteaks, but I think I'm going to save those for post game. Okay. Yeah, okay. That works. Fair. And let me just say this. If Nebraska loses today, which is not going to happen, but if they do, I will be calling in to Big Red Reaction. <laughs> no, you'll be hosting because I'll be one. No, I'm going to be calling in. I, I, got, I got something to say. You guys uh, know that's possible, right? Yes. It is. <laughs> okay. It is. Talk to you later. 3 o'clock, Real Red Reaction on ESPN. Lincoln, take care.